you're going to find it quite interesting and you'll probably find that there's quite a lot of stuff that you will find very useful in Purple Mesh that will help you in this difficult time. So it'll be useful. I have been back on. Okay. I'm going to go into the logging in page. All of you are familiar with Zoom? No, I'm struggling. <laughs> struggling. <laughs> Oh. You have minimized something to try to look at Purple Mash and now you've gone. And okay. I'm looking at Purple Mash. <laughs> okay, you're looking at Purple Mash and the reason is because I'm sharing its Purple Mash screen at the moment. This is the login page. This is where you're going to start off. See this address at the top here? That's the link that I sent to you. A link that would direct you to Mini Mash or Purple Mash. And that would just depend on what you anticipate doing with your class. With grade ones, I'd probably stick more to Minimash. Minimash is far more simple, and I think it's far more ideal for the very, very young kids. But with a bit of education, you can have them navigating between the two. When you log in, the first thing you're going to need to do is understand that with grade one, two, and three, Purple Mesh has a dimension called Mini Mesh, and that is made for the classroom teacher. It's specifically made and suited for a teacher that does class teaching. So it's your normal grade one, two, and three teacher. Purple Mesh, which is this dimension, what you see over here, is largely for the older children, yeah, and it's particularly suitable for me, who I often do a bit of coding with these kids. So they would use Purple Mesh. You. We're going to go into Mini Mesh. So we're going to just show you Mini Mesh, which is going to simulate a classroom environment. Okay. So I'm in Purple Mesh. You get either two links, Purple Mesh or Mini Mesh. You can go from one to the other very easily. You click on this. You see one of these. These are all giving you details. It's there to help you with it. The, any teacher who's got a problem, there's a whole lot of information that you can look at. I'm not going to go into that. You can click on those links yourself and it'll tell you a little bit more. But if you press this one, it says enter mini mesh. So we're going to enter mini mesh. And you'll see here we've got a simulated environment where you've got a classroom. So you've got the classroom and you've got your, I haven't turned the sound on from my computer, but if you go over any of these, these objects, the children, or any of the objects on the floor, any of them, and if, even if you go outside, you'll find that these are all activities. And I'll give you an example in a minute, where if you click on, you place work in a tray for children to do. So those trays are very important. Those are where you're going to place your work. But if I click on any of the objects here, there's a whole range of different lessons that you could use. Like, for instance, if I click on that, that book, here it's to create a story. And that is a tool that you would use would get children almost using like a PowerPoint display. So, or you could use this one, alphabet slideshows. There's a whole range of different activities which you're going to need to explore. And those activities are given to the children they placed in the tray. Okay, and children can even do those activities by themselves. But the tray is where you place your teacher activity that the children will go to when they go to Purple Mesh. They, the first thing you teach them, go to the tray because the tray is where they pick up their work so you can see now each one of you've got a different class i've just given one d so i'm in class one d you can see if i go up to this icon over there i'm in one d is that miss natu's class i think okay so one d there that's the class i'm in at the moment if i wanted to go to a different class i'd go to one c and the teacher would make this they would like to use it so it's a simulation so i'm in 1d so let's have a look at a activity now you're going to need to go to that and that's looking at here we've got two trays i've already made two trays if you wanted to make another tray you might have your class in ability groups and it might be a reading activity so you've got all these different trays here make another tray you can name the tray whatever you want to call it so let's call it the dog the dog Okay, and then you've got all that. I, I won't go into the image. You can change the image of it. You can change the color. You can make it public. That means that other people would be able to see it. You can go beyond Purple Mesh. That outsiders, even parents, you can link it into your, your website and you do our code. But I'm not going to go too much into that. So you've got three trays. All right, so these three trays need to then be assigned work. You need to give work to the different trays. I'm just going to show you one example where I go out, out of here. So I've got three trays over there. 
Say, for example, I want to go on over there. It says counting. Now, this is basic data handling. So I'm choosing Oz. And you can see that the children would, by clicking on these items, they can choose different items. And plusing, if they change that to a two, it'll go up in twos. It's teaching them how to add numbers. So it's, it's basic graphing, but it's for grade ones, twos, and threes. Say I decided that this was an activity I want to use. I would go red button and look over there. It says save and exit and there's a tray. So I can now place it in the children's tray for them to do. I might decide, okay, I'm gonna put it in the dog tray. And I save and it goes into the tray. Now you get got six activities that we can do and an arrow to show that we can get to more. Just loading. That work is now going to be saved in the tray and they'll be able to access it. You have now assigned it to them. So the tray is like a shared folder. When they log into Purple Mash or that they go to Mini Mash, because when they're with you, you're the class teacher, they would, they would automatically know that this is the place to go because it's simulating your class. You're going to have to uh, tailor make it to suit your class. And then they would go straight away to the trays because you've set work for them. So first of all, let's look at the ant. So they click on the ant one. And this is the tray that they see how oh, there's a, a puzzle that's been linked into the ant tray. So they're going to open it. And here's the file. Open the file. Obviously can be tailor-made by yourself to make it different. You can even paint on it like words. You can make it that it's, it's more academic. But it's a puzzle that's being generated. This would be appropriate for Charlotte's Web. Okay, and they just do this puzzle, get it in place. Quickly, I, I just copy this puzzle, find something that's in the curriculum, and there are lots of stuff that you can find. And yet they'll do the activity. When they finish the activity, they, after saving it, it's going to be available in that tray. Look, save and exit. So now it's in the tray. So when you as a teacher come into your class, you will go to the trays and you'll be able to see which work has been handed in. If you go into the penguin tray, let's just have a look at that one. Got, okay, I would be sa the saving some <coughs> penguin tray. I don't want to save that one. I'm just going to show you another example, penguins. And here's a piece of work that I put in here. It's called, do you, that one that I showed you called to create a story. So write a story about all items in the card game. Now, you can link your activities together. For example, if they'd made a card game, here's the card game. I'll just, it's in the other tray. I think it was the. Oh, look over here, the second one. Here is a card game that shows numbers being added with an answer. So in other words, it's a very simple game of the children making a card so clicking on a card two okay they vary like great r's and then clicking over here two i'm just giving you a really simple example three and you might have three i'm just you're going to have to tailor make it to make it fit your curriculum and work well for you so, four. yeah i'm going to go four dots just going to try work quickly, just, just so you get the gist of how it works. Ten, and then, and over here, a five, and a five. Okay, so a very simple example. Kid would then play the game. What you're doing is you're teaching them to see the relationship with the cards. I think you've got the idea. When the two cards fit together, obviously it's going to say you got it right. Okay, so that, very simple game, but in the in the previous example, I just wanted to, uh, when the child saves it, did you notice when I saved it, it said save to the tray. Did you see that? It said save to tray. So that means the child, when they finish playing it, they'll save it for you to come and have a look at afterwards. Right, so in my other example, the first one, linking activities, write a story about the items in the card game. So in other words, when the children decide to do this activity, they might say there were two dogs. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to draw a dog or anything, but you got, I'm drawing with my mouse, but you got two dogs and then one in the distance 
They're linking with a card game, but now they're doing a story and they're using two. So you're integrating. You're kind of relating your mathematics with your English. It's like a story. And then they would go to the next page and then they would do the next picture. They can even choose the picture and they would put the next part of their story. Two cats, 10 monkeys, I don't know. You've got to work it out. When you go save the child, this is the child. Save and exit and that's going to place it into the tray where you as a teacher will just open it up and you'll see the children's work. So all the work is going and being saved in the tray. Yeah. And I just want to go out of this. So that's, these, you're going to monitor these trays consistently. That's the work. Now you can, as you play around, you get to know the different activities. Like if I click on that coloring in activities, you, you, you've got to try see what what is available. You're gonna to have to fiddle around and see the different tools and how they can be integrated and what's relevant to the curriculum. Right. So you're gonna to have to make that meaningful. There's lots of activities. I'm only just I'm trying to rush it because we haven't got that much time. And here's a simulated city. When you click on these different things, I think this one's got health ser services, um, all these different things. You're gonna to have to. Ex or how they work yeah. and you've even got sound so you got to, you're going to have to build your own activity yeah. around that all right so yes. you're going to monitor the, your trays as the children come in they're going to save their work to the trays i'm just trying to think of the other items that were on the you're going to choose your class just to a little bit of recap you're going to choose our class over here whatever you're teaching if you teach two different classes you'll go to each different class and you will assign work you're going to assign work in the trays you can explore the different activities and you'll find that the activities allow you to build something around them. So if you click on the individuals, you'll see there's a jigsaw puzzle and you've got a lot of different activities that you can use. Go on these little black dots and you can go to different, look, there's the card game. And this is mathematics and linking up. You can, make a, you can change them as well. You've got to just be creative as a teacher. You've got to um, adapt. You're going to put all the work in here and then as soon as the children log in, they'll, they'll go to that and they will know exactly that's the work that's been assigned and you'll be able to monitor, monitor it from there. Uh, please do explore uh, a lot of what you can do. You'll find a lot of information as well. So I'm going to go and just show you some of the stuff. When you go to this, it's you go up here, the teacher menu, you'll see that there's information early years of children, like a little bit of how ch early children in grade one, two, and three would learn. There's a schema of work. So some of the planning that goes into Purple Mash. So if you click on there, mm -hmm. it gives you education, literacy, physical development, mathematics. You're going to have to explore. This is, this is all the teacher resources that's more around the planning. If you just click on those, you'll be able to download them, look at them. Most of them are PDF files. And there is further planning that's also found in Purple Mesh. So here's the teacher tools as well. So that's the planning scheme of work. Teacher tools is going to give you actual tools that you would make activity. Just have a look at that. Look, you've got the card game, jigsaw puzzles, drag, multi-drag. All of these are different activities that you can build. Look, there's a diagram. If you, I'll just open it up. If I try to close that. First, you can have a picture, you can bring in a picture, you can bring your own picture from your computer. I'm just going to, I don't really want to go too much into this, but you can put labels and the labels would then indicate different uh, answers. And then when the children do that, it would tell them, you could set this as a, uh, these are all largely linking labels to the diagram in the middle. I don't really want to go and do it too, go in too much detail. I can do another lesson with you and I can show you how to do that. I just want to basically just, emphasize how to put work in those trays and show you that you've got all these different activities that you will do. Mrs. Grieve would love this. I don't know if she's not here, but you'll see here you can even make musical pieces where children will pay, make a piece of music and they can even record their own voice. If you go over here, you can record your own musical piece. There's lots of stuff and that's largely for music. When your children do good work, you've got certificates, a whole range of different certificates which you can post for the children so you've got great mm. uh, you got uh, you can add that yeah. you notice children have done some good work to certificate go through those and you can see you can just place it into the, the the tray and you could say john this is your certificate 
Okay, all right, that's, that's uh, for certificates and just giving positive reinforcement. Now, remember when grade one, two, and three teachers, you also have that ability to go to Purple Mash. If you, you want to get out of this classroom environment and you want to a little broaden yourself out more, you want to broaden out and do some more interesting activities, go to Purple Mash. So you can go, here's to your trays. I'm not going to do that. I've already shown you the trays. And here you can go to Purple Mash, and here you can switch classes, and that's logging out. So go to Purple Mash, and I'm going to just open Purple Mash. So here you've got a lot more that you can do. I'm just going to show you some of the stuff here. The grade ones are also given, here's where you will keep your work. It's, it's just basically like Windows Explorer. You're going to save all your work in these different files, but your children are all there. They're already arranged in classes. So here's your class. We were working with 1D. And you will see, as you assign work, it'll go into the to-dos. This will be formal work that you are giving to the children. It's formal work. So here's some of the activities. You can see there's already some teachers who have given some activities. You can see writing. Mrs. Bremner has given a writing activity. And you can open this. I can even mark it. Look, if I open it up, here you can give a reward. And you can see bat. And there she's got some little quiz that's going. I'm very pleased to see that she's done this. She's got a quiz going over here. I'm not sure how many questions are in it. it looks about 10. And she's, if she decides that this child deserves a reward, you click on their rewards. And you can choose a reward for, uh, if it was maths, excellence, you choose a reward. But I don't want to mess up her work, so I'm not going to do that. You can even record your own voice. You press this little red button, and then you can talk and say, I'll just give you an example. I really liked your work. I think it's amazing what you've done. Thank you for your hard work. And that automatically goes into the recording. The, ch the child will then hear your voice, the teacher's voice, in this activity. So obviously, Mrs. Bremner is going to mark this, but this child's going to open it up when they look at their to-do, and they're going to see there's a uh, Mr. Bradley has added in a recording as well. And you've got lots of other things. Judgments means you can actually give a mark. Purple Mash allows you to build a rubric. Here you've got year one, grade one, subject, life skills. You can choose whatever. But the weather. And you can see here you've got your, where you can choose which of these judgments you'd like to use. And you can assign that they'll get marks between, and that will come out as an Excel spreadsheet between three and five, six and seven, and you can work out marks. I don't want to go too much into that, otherwise I'm going to burn you with too much detail. Okay, so to just re re recap where we went, you're in, in Minimash. Okay, I'm going to go back to Minimash. Please do interrupt me. If I've put all your mics on. If you want to interrupt me, that's not a problem. I have no problem with you interrupting because I might go too fast or I might be too slow. Mini Mash, remember when you open Purple Mash, Mini Mash. That's going to take you to your simulated classroom environment. This is where you're going to make this particularly suit your individual class, and you're going to make that. Choose your class, because you all teach different classes. You choose the class that you're going to be working with at that particular moment, and then you're going to fiddle around and explore this. If you want to go back to Purple Mash, you can be a little bit more formal. Now you've got formal testing, whether you're going to set work through an activity, which is, let, let's do that card game, for example. If I say, okay, now I want formal assessment, or let's say, look, we want a child to do a, make a movie. It's like a simple movie program. I, I would never do this, but I'm going to say that this one, Corona, Okay, and it's something I save. It's I'm saving it on my work folder. Now remember, as a teacher, I'm saving it as in my work folder. So if you went to the work folder, it's like Windows Explorer. If I wanted to give this as an activity, all the children are going to do. See, yeah. So set to. Yeah. So I'm going to go write a story or tell us about the corona. I definitely would not do that. It's a very bad example, but you would, because we don't want our children too stressed out. But if you had to do something like that, maybe in a history lesson in a few years time, when this is all history, then you would go next. You, and you'd love this. You guys are going to love this. You can set the dates. I can make it from the, they've got from the third to the seventh to do this. And then I wanted to repeat home so can, they can do it anytime and I want it to be repeated weekly so in other words next week this project will come with this the second 
um, activity. And then it'll be the third activity. Every week it'll repeat itself. And you can make slight changes to it as you go along. So I'm going to give it to 1D. Or you might even decide you want to give it to a specific child. Like, look, 1D, grade 1D, Mrs. Natu's class, and I'm only going to give it to Fumni. So fund me. And I decide, okay, this person's going to get this activity. Can you see? By checking there, set to do, that means it'll only go to that one specific child. That child could then be assisted and given an activity if they have a certain weakness or they might have a strength where you want to extend them. So there's lots you can do and really go through and explore because you realize that it's a lot more than one initially anticipated. If you're stuck and you want to know where the training is, here it is. So mine looks a bit small, but if you go over here to teachers, you'll see here is the curriculum, the South African curriculum, purple mash and caps. And if you want to go and have a look at your grade one, yes, grade one D, remember I'm teaching grade one D at, at the moment, this is not too slow. Here is the curriculum. It's got all the work within grade one D and it's looking at, what is EHL? I think it's first language. Yeah, because look here, it says create a story and it says different situations. It's home language. Home language. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. And here it says, it gives you the, a basic outline of what's what's involved and the, about the resource and here it gives you this is all from caps and then it will give you a direct link to a purple mash resource so the resource you're going to use if you are going to do a story on listening to stories and expressing feelings I would know that this is going to be the link that I could use and it helps you you go straight to that link and I, obviously here I need to enable flash which is if any of you have any technical difficulties, you've got a link that's already starting and you can go through it and then you can build an activity for the children. Sorry that some of us are, are coming on a bit late. So you would then save that as a to-do. How do you do that? When you've saved your work, go through it again. You want to give a child an activity. So let's say this is a test that I've done with grade five, fives and sevens. Set, you go to your your folder where you keep all your work. Now, please don't save your work as badly as I do. Uh, Reka, you're going to hate that. Look how badly my file folders are all laid out. Gee, you know, <laughs> so you're going to hate that. And then I go, this is the activity that I've set for today. So I'm going to go set to do, description. I can record my own voice and I can record a description. Boys and girls, I'd like you to do this activity. We're dealing with the coronavirus and I want you to tell me what happened in your day today. And obviously a bad example and then you're going to go through the process of I have to enter a description I'm just doing I'm not going to really set it you can choose when the children must do it by maybe you give them a week because obviously we are in a situation where you might not want to give them here I've got like from the third to the 17th and then you might decide whether you wanted it what time you want it done either in school times I've actually set the school times in purple mesh so it's running from the early morning, I think it was eight o'clock till the time that school's end is four o'clock. So you find that's called to be done at school or to be done at home. Right, and that would be after four o'clock. You can do it at any time as well. And then you're going to assign it to your classes. You're going to choose or to which individual child would do that activity. I could assign it to the whole of 1D or I could assign it to all four, all the grade one classes are going to do this activity. Set to do and then the children will see their work. Now, when the children come into Purple Mash, they're going to look at, this is what it's going to look like. Let me show you. It's going to be children right there. I'm going to go in as some child in 1D. Now, you can, if you want to know what the children are going to experience when they go into Purple Mash, you go here on this and you go, I'm incidentally going to send you the, the recording of this video. I'll put it up so we can. So I'm going to go as one of the children, admin, impersonate one of the children in one day. I think it was Femi was that kid that I was talking about earlier. So let's just see one D. It was Femi, had that F A M. Femi, F U N M I. F U M. Ah, they were Funmi. All right. How do you pronounce it? Funmi. Funmi. Okay, there we go. I just can't recall what Funmi looks like. So I'm now opening up Funmi. You look, this is Funmi. I'm opening up as if I am Funmi. And Funmi will go to the to do's. And it says, ah, oh, long holiday weekend. This is just some work that I've pasted. Do in two days. 
and repeats every week. So the child will go start and then they would fill in there, they do their story, whatever you've given them. This is like a PowerPoint display. They can bring in animation. I won't go into all of that, but there's animation and everything. And two monkeys, another card game example that I gave you early on. Okay, and then the child would, red button, save and exit. Once they've saved their work, they can choose whether they're finished with it, they can hand in. See that button there? They can hand it in. Saved this work. I'm acting as if I'm Vunmi, and she can record a speech. If you want to give the, to the child to give a speech, uh, she could say, Mrs. Natu, I wanted to tell you that I'm so happy with all this work that we're doing in Purple Mash. Thank you very much for being my teacher. Okay, so there we go. So now it's been saved. She's recorded a little speech there. I don't know what you'd give for marks. Gone green. Handed in. Green is indicating work is done. It's handed in. I go back to my to-dos. I'm going to go have a look at now, um, some of the work, and I'm going to have a look at Femi's work, a weekly story. So, um, okay, well, I see this. This is a different one. Uh, write a story. That's 1D, view 1D's folder. Uh, there, Femi's handed in her work. So now you will have all your children in your class will be listed as who handed in their work. Now, you probably want to know who did not hand in their work. So you go here, and if you go to re um, uh, report, you look, all these children haven't done their work. How good is that? That you get a whole list of all the children who haven't handed in their work. So you can see who has handed in their work and who hasn't. Now you want to mark their work. Now watch this. You're going to love this. you got to mark, and I can say, I'm marking Femi's work, and I can record my speech. Femi, I think you did a great job. Thanks so much for handing your work in first. Done. That's recorded on the children's work, that they can hear your voice. And I can go, brilliant reward. I can give Femi a reward for good work. Now, obviously, I've shown puerile work. I, you need to develop the, your activity that it's thoughtful. I could give her a reward, English for excellence or effort. And, or we could find something else, and you can give her a reward. I'll give her a reward for this, and then you can just see how that looks. So I'm going to go submit, and you can see, look, it says reward. You can also add in your little comment over here, and you can press your stars that would normally be found in your workbooks. When you give children stars in their books, you can also give stars over here. All right, so you've got all of this wonderful thing, and when you go save, Fenmi will then open up Purple Mash and see that you've marked it. She would be able to look and hear your voice, also hear her voice, and see all the handed in work. Now remember, this is in Purple Mash. In Mini Mash, they would do more or less the same, but in the tray. Those trays would be where they would be handing in and giving in work. Okay, so they, you as a teacher, probably are gonna find that your more formal work that you're gonna do, you can choose whether you wanna move, move between Purple Mash or Mini Mash. You yourself will have to work around and how you're gonna do that. When you go on to, when you log in and you set up a activity, you'll find that you can use everything that I'm showing you. It will be available. It's available for teachers. So these, this is the teacher section of Purple Mass. Children have certain limitations, like they, they have email, which I'll show you in, not now, but I will show you in another lesson, I'll show you how to email your children. If you're going to use Purple Mash's resources, then that's... Pretty, pretty easy, but I'll show you how to bring a PDF. Say, for example, you've got a, a PDF. you just got something very simple on your computer that you want to put to grade 1D. So I'm going to, put a t I'm going to upload a file. So if I put this file into, uh, I'm going to upload it from my computer. If I go over here, it's not even in Purple Mash. It's something that I want to upload to Purple Mash, and it's from my computer. So it's a PDF. Let's have a look. I've got PDF files here. As my daughter's presentation that she did the other day, PowerPoint. I'm going done. There it's in Purple Mash. So this does, it's the children in 1D, when they go in, every child will be able to open this. They will see in their folder, remember when it's saved in 1D, it means all the children in 1D will be able to access this PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation. It could be a video, it could be a, a movie uh, file, which is large it could be a reading of a story you can bring your stuff in here and the children can then read it i can even set these activities that the children will interact with it 
Okay, well, I think in the next lesson I'll go over how when you put an activity or into the folder, when you put an activity from outside, like, or I might decide, like, look, let's decide we want to go give Femi. Fund me. I want him to read something that I, a personal resource, I want him to practice. So I'm going to work in me now. Upload. And I'm going to go over here. And I'll find a file. And then I'll upload it specifically for Fenmi. In other words, it's not necessarily for the whole class. It's directed at this specific kid. And you can even direct it to a specific group of kids. At, at this particular moment, I think I've gone far enough. I don't want to overburden you guys with, or you girls with too much. But if you would be happy that we do another a lesson where I can just go a little bit more, give you a little bit more of, of an example. Maybe on Monday, would that be all right with everybody? Well, um with foundation phase for Monday. Um, Any Thanks, Mr. Bradley. Thank you so much to all of you for being part of this. And I will post this video up so that if you want to refer back to it, you'll be able to refer back to it just to for reference purposes and we'll build on it. We'll get to a point where you're all so familiar with Purple Mash that you'll be able to work through it very easily and be happy to help you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much.